we are still in God's plans. Regardless of what we've been through, going through, or think we're going to go through, we're still in God's plans. And I said, you know, we, we want to, uh, an attitude is when I take uh, a position based on a mindset or it's a state of mind that causes me to take a position. And so before I get stuck in disappointment, I have to make sure that my state of mind is based in truth. And oftentimes, if I can get my state of mind based in truth, then I won't get stuck in a place of disappointment. Now, in Romans chapter 6, no, Romans chapter 8, let's start reading at verse number 16. And I'm going to read for a while. I love Romans chapter 8, in case you all didn't know that. Verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Every one of these verses you got to get. First of all, God dwells in us by his spirit, and it lets us know that we are children of God. And if children, we're heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, verse 17 lets us know we're going to suffer some things. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Second time, lets us know we're going to suffer th some things. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits on the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 19 is just saying all of nature is waiting on the sons and daughters of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him, who has subjected him, uh, subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Meaning nature is going through everything nature is going through, and amen, nature has been going through a lot here lately, because Adam sinned. And nature is going to continue to suffer until man is fully redeemed and we have a new heaven and a new earth. For we know that the whole of creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Not only they, but ourselves pain, ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we do it with patience, we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, verse 26, the Spirit helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. For when we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searched the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and them he justified, them he also glorified. Now, there's a lot in there, and so we're going to just take this a little bit at a time and go through some things. There are five things under this point I want you to remember. Remember, letter A, we all experience sufferings. We all experience sufferings. Well, why? 
Why do we go through these things? Because of the sin of Adam. We all are going to go through things that we did not expect and cannot control. We are all going to go through things that we did not expect and cannot control. You know, it's, uh, let me preface this statement. Every person under the sound of my voice should have a healthy diet. Every person under the sound of my voice should eat right. Every person under the sound of my voice should exercise. Every person under the sound of my voice should go to the doctor. Every person should follow the doctor's instructions. Now, if you eat right and you exercise and you go to the doctor and you follow the doctor's instructions, you can still get sick. If you exercise, if you eat right, if you do everything, say, I, I, I never smoke, I don't drink, I eat right, I exercise, I take care of myself. And we go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you got a problem. Well, how did I get a problem? Now, I, I'm going to share something with you, because I know people, we love, uh, we love buying these books and reading this stuff. You know, three, three foods to eat to ensure you never have or will never get. Okay. So let's go there. Okay. You can buy the book and eat the three foods every meal for years and go to the doctor and still get cancer. I know people who ate healthy. They didn't eat this because it was bad for them. Didn't eat that. All they ate was, as my father used to say, wheat stubble and hay. Exercise, fit, no fat on their body whatsoever. Went to the doctor as young people. Amen. You know, as you get older, young gets younger, right? Young gets older as you get older, right? So young people, people in their 40s and their 50s, babies. And they say, and the doctor says, you have cancer. And the first thing they say is, that's not possible. I did this, 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 I did this. Listen, our bodies are corruptible. Now, if you don't take care of it, it's going to break down sooner than if you do take care of it. But whether you take care of it or not, it's going back to the ground from which it came. Amen? Now, I've also met people who didn't take particularly great care of their body and lived a long time. And I've seen people who took great care of their body and didn't live a long time. So, listen, things happen. We are going to go through things. See, sufferings are, th listen, here, here's a list of things that we're all going to experience. We're all going to experience evil. We're all going to experience evil. Somebody's going to say something, do something, or treat us in an evil way. We're all going to experience evil. Guess what else we're all going to experience? Misfortune. We're all going to experience misfortune. What is next word, you might want to look it up on your own time, but we're all going to experience calamity. You know what calamity is? It's these cicadas that came out every 17 years. It, it, it's drought in the West. It's heat waves, you know, calamity. Just we're, we're all going to experience hardship. You, you can't live your life without ever experiencing hardship. We're all going to experience in our lives pain. Now, I know this may sound bad, but I'm going somewhere, and it's going to be encouraging. You just have to bear with me. But we're all going to experience pain. We're all going to go through things that we have to endure. We're all going to have to go through things that we're going to have to endure. In life, there are things that there's no way to get to the other side but just endure it. We're all going to go through things where we're going to have to endure it. You know, uh, there, there are whole years, uh, multiple years of my wife and I's life where we look back and say, you know what, we just had to survive. We just had to endure that time. It was difficult. It wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't what we expected. But the reality was we were going through and there was no other way around it. You're going to have to deal with issues in life. And if you're a Christian, you're also going to have to go through persecution. You're going to have to deal with issues of life and you're going to have to deal with persecution. That's why uh, Paul said that if we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. Now, that suffering is talking about the persecution 
that we're going to go through as Christians. But then he said in verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. That second suffering is referring to the evil, <laughs> the misfortune, the calamity. Now, when I'm, the, the next Bible study I'm at, we're going to go to Matthew 5, and, and Jesus makes it even more clear when he says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust, as well as the sun shines on the just and the unjust. So when I say we're going to go through these things, because this is the thing I've noticed that causes Christians to be disappointed. Somehow we have, we have uh, made up in our mind that only we're going through stuff. Everybody goes through stuff. Now the blessing is we have Jesus, but everything we're going through, everybody goes through. And the reason I'm giving us this is because all of these things can cause disappointment, but all of these things don't have to cause disappointment. If I, if I can learn how to think correctly, then, then these things are going to occur, but they don't have to cause disappointment. See, if I, if I can develop the mentality that's in Hebrews uh, chapter 12, where I realize that unlike Jesus, I'm not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, that, that what I'm going through pales in comparison to what he went through, and yet he didn't get discouraged. He never became disappointed. He was able to finish his assignment then I can keep moving. Listen, if I realize that everyone experiences sufferings, then I'll stop making statements like, why is everything happening to me? This is not fair. It seems like everybody's picking on me. You know, we have a conspiracy uh, way about us sometimes where hardship is just your hardship. Why is this happening to me? Why is this, you know, everybody else? No, no, no. Everybody else is not living uh, in the Bahamas, on the beach, with sunshine every day while you go through stuff. Everybody goes through situations. Everybody experiences things that can cause disappointment. And when we start to realize that it's not just me, that I'm not unique, that I don't have bad luck, that, you know, uh, the stars are not aligned against me, you know, because we, listen, Christians, we'll, we'll come up with anything when we go through enough stuff. The stars ain't my way. You know, I don't believe in luck, but then five bad things happen. I just got some bad luck. You know, listen, you have life. We have life. And this is a great teaching for right now, because guess what? Some of us didn't expect August to look like August is looking. Because we went, we got our two shots, Somebody said, you can go do what you want to do. We said, party over here. And now all of a sudden, it's not looking like the way we thought it was going to look. And now we're all disappointed. See, you got to learn how to think correctly. I told my wife when we went, I think it was the day of our first shot, I said, listen, we're getting this vaccination, but we're not changing nothing. We're still going to wear masks. We're still going to keep our social distance. We're still going to do all of these things because we don't know where this thing is going. No need to get excited. No need to have, you know, a mask burning party and set everything ablaze and start at, because, listen, some of y'all got to go out and go, go to, you know, that store that's named after a river that's online, and you got to buy new masks because you burned the old ones. Now you're discouraged. You're disappointed. I just don't understand. Listen, you got to be able to think correctly. We were not promised a life where we weren't going to have suffering. We were not promised a life where we were not going to have suffering. So I have to realize that we all experience sufferings. But, us, but going through something doesn't mean I have to be disappointed. It doesn't mean I have to be sad. It doesn't mean I have to be discouraged. It doesn't mean that I have to be discontent. I have to think correctly about life. Life has challenges. I'm going through a challenge or I went through a challenge or there may be some challenges on the horizon, but it's not because the devil is busy in my life or because God has turned his back on me. It's just because life has challenges. So letter B, here's some good news. We have hope. We have hope. We have hope because of what we have as believers. See, the next time 
something happens that you didn't expect. Or when you look back at things in your past that you didn't expect. Or you see things in your future and it looks uncertain. Just remember, you have a father who loves you. You have grace to help you. Remember, you have the Holy Spirit to help your infirmities. See, instead of focusing on the fact that something didn't meet your expectations, how about focusing on the fact that I have a Father who loves me? I have grace. Grace can keep me. I have the Holy Spirit. He's going to help me with my infirmities. Why, why don't I focus on the fact that I have a brother in Jesus Christ who can be touched with what I'm going through? How about the fact that I have a body of Christ to edify me? I'm not, I'm not having to go through this all by myself. I'm not having to go through this all by myself. How about I focus on the fact that I have value and I have purpose? My value hasn't changed because of what I've gone through, and my purpose hasn't changed because of what I've gone through. And how about have some hope because you still have time? Have hope because you still have time. As long as you have breath in your body, keep hope in your heart. You still have time. See, instead of saying, oh, I, I, I've got a negative diagnosis, how about saying, I still got time on the earth. So even though my body may be breaking down, there's still things I can do in the time that I have. How we see things. You know, I have, uh, I've had the blessed privilege, and I say this this way on purpose. I've had the blessed privilege to minister and to talk with people who have terminal illnesses. And it, it's a wonderful thing to be around people who understand they have hope when the doctor gives them a terminal diagnosis. And the reason I say that is because you can see they walk in that hope. And it's a wonderful thing to see a person know that, hey, the doctor may have said this. My future may not look the way that I thought it was going to look, but I'm here. And there's some people I'm going to talk to. There's some plans I'm going to make. There's some things I'm going to get in order while I have this breath in my body. While, while I'm strong enough to do, I'm going to do the things that I can do. And, and I use that because that's the most extreme example. But, but church, no matter what's happened in your past, no matter what you think your present situation is, no matter what you think your future looks like, you've got a Father who loves you. You've got grace. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got Jesus. You're in a body called the body of Christ to edify you in these weak moments. You have value. You have purpose. And listen, even if you only have a day, you still have time. You still have time to be what God has called you to be and to do what God has called you to do. Note this as your letter C. God can still be glorified. God can still be glorified. See, no, ma no matter what you have suffered, don't be disappointed. God can still be glorified. God can still be honored with how you handle the affairs of your life. Listen, the Bible here says that all things work together for good. That doesn't mean that everything is good. That doesn't mean that everything that happened to you was good. But it means that God can work in and through whatever has happened for good. So that, listen, so that something that was intended not to have a beneficial effect can have a beneficial effect. Let me say that again. When, when the Bible says that all things can work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose, what, what Paul here is saying is something that was not good, God can make it work together for good. He can cause it to have a beneficial effect, even though it was designed not to be beneficial. So God, listen, God can work through some of these things that we experience or th that we suffer, and he can work through us. He can still get glory, and he can still get honor. Note this as your letter D. We are still in God's plans. We are still in God's plans. Regardless of what we've been through, going through, 
or think we're going to go through. We're still in God's plans. He still loves us. We're still predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son. God didn't cancel his plans because of our disappointment. God did not cancel his plans because of our disappointment. Church, one of the things I have learned in the post that I'm in is that I ha you have to get over disappointment because God didn't cancel the plans. It's not what you expected. It's not what you thought. You know, there, there are, there are uh, over the last, in, in 2019, I put together a succession of plans for the ministry, things that I wanted to do, things I wanted to accomplish, places and direction that I wanted the ministry to be in. And those plans were for last year and this year. And every one of those things just about that I planned out has been diverted, delayed, disappointed, or just flat out canceled. I mean, just about everything. And then my wife and I, in 2019, we laid out plans for us, things we wanted to do, things we wanted to accomplish. Things we want, and just about all of those plans were altered, delayed, uh, or, or diverted. Then we laid out plans for our children, and many of those plans have been delayed, diverted, or disappointed. But guess what? It hasn't altered God's plan. It hasn't altered God's plan. And so our, sometimes when we're disappointed, we start to feel like things are over. It's not over. Amen? Yes, things may be altered. Yes, we may have to make adjustments, but I want you to have hope in your heart and realize that we've all been through some things, but God is faithful. And then uh, lastly, I want you to remember that we are promised victory. We are promised victory. He said, in all these things, if you read out to the rest of the chapter, it says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. That is, we're victorious over anything that we've experienced in our past. I don't care how big or bad or severe you think it was. You may say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I had a horrible thing happen to me in the past. I had a terrible thing happen to me in the past. Th things that are unimaginable happen. I've experienced things that, that Pastor, you just, you just don't understand, but God knows. He sees and he cares. And, and guess what? You're still here. And you still have time. And you're still standing. And God desires for you to have the victory. God has made you more than a conqueror. But listen, you can't be victorious if you're not in the game. You have to get up. You have to get moving. You have to do your part. I know that there are things that have happened in our past that are hurtful, and they've left us in a disappointed state. But you have a new day and a new opportunity to get moving. I, I know that you may have to make some adjustments, and there may be some things you have to overcome. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And so I just want us to remember that even though we all go through some things, I want you to have hope. I want you to know that God can still get glory. I want you to know that God's plans for you still have not changed. And I want you to know that you have the victory. So that as we move to the second point and the third point and the teachings by the other pastors, you'll have some hope in your heart that no matter what has happened to you, you don't have to stay in a disappointed and discouraged state of life. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you again soon. Amen. If you're watching, if you're listening, I want you to know that God loves you. He really does. And don't confuse what you've been through with how God feels about you. Those are two different things. What you've been through is a result of the times that we live in. How God feels about you is that he loves you. And he wants to give you the grace and the power to overcome the things that you've been through to be the person that he's created you to be. And it begins with inviting him 
into your heart and into your life. So no matter where you are, no matter where you're listening, I want you to just simply repeat this prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins, create in me a clean heart, and renew my spirit. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead to give me life. I receive him now into my heart and commit to live a godly life. In Jesus' name, amen.